you know, the do-it-yourself venues were, to me, were the best things because um, the times were fun. You know, the, uh, the after-school flipper special was fucking amazing. Going right after school and like going into the city and going to see Flipper like in the late afternoon. It was great. Flipper at the Media Workshop, seven floors or five floors up on that first uh, block of uh, Boylston Street in between Arlington and Berkeley Street. I've seen Flipper there and we hated him. The best show at Media Workshop was the Flipper show. I liked how Flipper pushed people's buttons. So. And they were loud. The Flipper show at the Media Workshop was pretty memorable because um, I think that one got shut down early for some reason. And we actually helped them carry their equipment out of there at the end of the show. And that was on the fourth floor. So that was kind of interesting. I remember seeing Flipper there. That was more intense than what I was expecting because they're kind of dirty and slow, but everyone was going full force. And I remember seeing a Flipper show one afternoon there. And the place got freaking destroyed. I, th I think they played like two songs. And like the, the roof was pulled down. It was like, it, it was, the place was just a pit in like six minutes. And, um, you know, I think that the show ended and everybody just left. Everybody like ran away from that show. But the place got destroyed. All I know is Flipper came in and it was like a G.G. Allen kind of feel. So I got my little push broom and I said, all right, I'm going to go out somewhere and like sweep the stairs down, make sure there's no beer cans or broken windows, right? All of a sudden, I got like three steps down. <laughs> <laughs> and the cops were coming up and somebody's telling me like that show lasted like three minutes or something. <laughs> but I just remember the whole place just like being destroyed and chaos <laughs> breaking out and being scared and like running and the cops coming and taking off and trying to look like I wasn't part of that thing that just happened but we all totally looked like we were there and you know and it getting dispersed and then that being the end of it. That was the last show. I think the Misfit shows were always usually pretty fun. I remember, you know, there was things like that coming home from those shows, like I, 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 I just being banged up and being sort of invigorated with adrenaline and stuff like that, not being able to sleep the whole night afterwards. And that's another thing too. A band like the Dead Kennedys to come and play in Boston, people don't realize especially back in 1980, how just horribly offensive that was. And that was such, uh, I don't even know how we got permission to have them play in the city when they did come. One cool story I remember is I was about 15. We went to see uh, Black Flag at the channel. Outlets opened up for them. And uh, afterwards we went to some party on Com Ave and hung out with Black Flag. That was, you know, probably went, you know, so young and it wasn't, it wasn't more like a rock star type of thing, it was just people hanging out. But I think I was 15, it's the first night I ever, you know, I just didn't come home. So I got in big trouble for that one. I mean, I mean one I guess I should say is, um, it was more a luck, feeling lucky to be there, but Chris Cadu played a, uh, a secret show at Chet's Last Call, and I was connected with Chet's and a bunch of bands that played there, and so that was pretty awesome to be standing, you know, closer than you and I are, and Bob Mould standing right, you know, playing in the, you know, I was at the last Mission of Burma show. This is a hardcore show, if you want to talk about hardcore shows. At the Bradford Hotel, and you know, Negative FX, the whole debacle with them, classic. I mean, seeing the Boston policeman on stage standing there, it was just, I was so happy to say that I went to that show. Yeah, we would mostly go to, I mostly went to New York. I remember we would have, we would go to the big shows down there, like, one time we went and saw um, Bad Brains, Minor Threat, and MDC all in one show, which seems a little over the top now, but I remember even then thinking, like, this is too much, and um, I was just thinking this, I hope it's the right one, but there was, a, there was like a straight edge van and like a, like a party van, and I think maybe even Drew Stone might have driven the party van, because <laughs> I remember we were deciding, and Jake, of course, went in the party van, and me and Tony went in the straight van. The cops got wind that the band was called Millions of Dead Cops. It was on one of the posters. It wasn't on all the posters, but it was on one of the posters. And so the day of the show, you know, I think it was like eight cops on motorcycles. They looked like the wild bunch pulling into, you know, into the leather district came down and they all like, you know, show of force, come up to the gallery. And, you know, before the, you know, before, 
before any, any conversation, you know, they're rubbing the manager's head for MDC. It was a girl, you know, and they get the, the, the cop, the head cop. Next thing you know, we're doing a chin-up contest on the door frame. It was just, it, it, they fit into the community just almost like anybody else, like Bob White, you know, or, you know, uh, Mr. Butch. The first, the first show that really, really changed my life was going to see my favorite, uh, was Iggy Pop at the Paradise. And he had Glenn Matlock playing bass with him, and he had Brian James from The Damned playing guitar. Ivan Kral from Patti Smith's band playing. And it's to this day still the best show I ever saw in my life. Um, it was the first time in my life I ever did Speed. And it was the night I lost my virginity. So I was like, that's it. I'm into this for life.